Women are being told. <laughs> women are being told that if they want to catch and keep a man, they better be, and I quote, bright and shiny. That means hair and makeup and nail polish and high heels 24 7. Now, that is the advice from comedian and actor and radio host and now number one best selling author, Steve Harvey. <laughs> book it is flying off the shelves the book is called act like a lady think like a man so act like a lady think like a man all right come on out Steve Harvey Congratulations on this book. It's number one. It's flying off the shelves. It's like the hardest book in the world to find. That's amazing. It's isn't it? amazing. Wow. Amazing, amazing. And it, you guys, this book is so, so hard to find. I actually have this one copy. I went to the bookstore myself, and like this was the only copy I could get my hands on personally because I bought the store out, and I'm giving all of you guys a copy. <laughs> So what inspired you to write this book? I thought, you, I thought you said I bought the books. I, really not how it's supposed to work. I mean, you know, I got a, you know, I got a radio show, a nationally syndicated radio show. I do a segment called The Strawberry Letter. 98% mm -hmm. of the people that write in are women. And 98% of the problems they write about are some problems they having with a guy. Always. And we always my, have problems with you guys. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I understand that. I do understand. And, you know, I got daughters. So, you know, I got four daughters. And, uh... I got identical twins that are 26 years old. Wow. So, you know, I was sitting there talking one day. My father-in-law was at the house. He's 72 years old. And she was, uh, she had left the kitchen and her boyfriend was over. He had been over the house about five times. So it looked like he was going to make the cut, you know. <laughs> and so my father-in-law, he's 72, you know, 52. I'm standing there. And he asked the guy, he said, so what's your plans with my granddaughter? And he said, oh, no, well, you, you know, we just, you know, you know, we just got a little thing going on. He said, no, 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 no. What's your plan for my granddaughter? So, he, so I sat down at the table because I'm interested now because my father-in-law, 72, I'm 52, we sit there, we know you have a plan <laughs> because if we look at you across the room and we walk over to you, we have a plan. We just may not share it with you, but we have a plan. So he sat him down and the guy didn't come up with an answer and finally he just said, well, to be honest with you, we just kicking it. And so I said, cool, let's bring my daughter in here and let's inform her that she's just being kicked with. <laughs> and let's see how she handles that. And they broke up the next day. They so. did? Yeah, I that. love it. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. So, okay, explain the title, Act Like a Woman, Think Like a Man. You well, act, act like a lady and think like a man. You know, I, I, I still say that women should act like ladies. You know, it's a beautiful thing, you know, to stand there and let a guy open your door. You know, don't be a chirp girl. But sometimes you know, you're standing there and he ain't going to open it. Well, then guess what? Then you don't get in and go with him. Got it. You know, that's all it is. You can't be a chirp girl. I tell my What's daughter, a chirp girl? you know, when a guy just hit, chirp, chirp, just hit the door. <laughs> You know, and then you open it and you get in. My sons are not allowed to get into a car unless my wife is in the car and their sister's in the car. Wow. Because in the event that something happens, we can't be in there, buckle up, and something <laughs> happened outside the car, we can't protect them. So I teach them that. And you just be a lady. You know, you, don't, you can still be independent. You can still have your own thing. Do you. Make all the money you can make, climb the ladder. But, that, but be a lady, though. Yeah. You know, a guy take you to dinner, he's supposed to open the chair. He's supposed to open the door. He's supposed to pay the check? He's supposed to pay the check. Yeah! needs to look bright and shiny to get a man. Bright and shiny. Well, like, what does that I mean? I mean, look, you I know, just... guys like shiny stuff. Shiny. We're not going to stop that. You may not like what I'm saying. It don't stop it from being the truth, though. We like shiny stuff. You know, when a guy first meets you, you shiny. Now, some <laughs> things happen along the way. I got it, you know. But you got to shine up every now and then. Okay. Because if you don't, He's going to see shiny somewhere and want it. So shiny, is that lip gloss and like sequins? I mean, it could be anything. Wh whatever attracted the man to you in the So if you were wearing these when you uh, was, you know, dating a man. <laughs> shiny. 
<laughs> Keep it shiny. Yeah, well, know. we have audience questions for you. Oh, that's Advice, cool. Advice, Steve. These uh, women are in dire straits, and they want some Steve Harvey act like a lady, think like exactly a man advice. I know exactly what to tell them, because guess what? I know how men think. I'm an expert on manhood. All right. I'm not an expert on relationships. Please don't get this twisted. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so what manhood question do you have for um, him, Caitlin? Hi, Steve and Tyra. I'm Caitlin. I'm 25, and I'm a mom. And I'm a stay-at-home mom. I'm a student. You know, I want to look pretty. I want to look great for my husband all the time. How do I do that? I don't have time when I've got little kids attached to my leg, and, you know, they're two and under. How can I look pretty all the time and look good for him? So and, you want to look bright and shiny. Yeah, but still be the well, mom and, you okay, know. Okay, see, now guess what? See, now you're coming at me from another angle now. <laughs> see, I don't know what you do to look shite and briny, but something attracted this man to you. Now, we're not idiots, look. You know, we're, we're guys, but we're not idiots. Not all the time. You know, we know you've had a baby. Some things are going to change. There's some time constraints. But I think a couple to keep it fresh has got to fix some time throughout the week, a few times a week, where, hey, when the kid goes to bed, you know, we need to lock it down and we need to play like we used to play. You know, I need to do some things for you that I used to do for you to encourage what you and you? Then you do some things you used to do for me. What you used to do to, for him? What did I used to yeah, do? Yeah, when you guys would lock it down. <laughs> yeah. What did you used to do? You know, How I did you get the baby? Try to look my best. <laughs> <laughs> just, you know, tried to look my best and impress him and have yeah. fun. Did with you wear heels? What's that? Did you wear heels? I did wear heels. Yeah. Did you wear matching drawers, top and bottom? Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now, are your, What's now that? are your underwear a little bit more granny ish? Uh, I, not so much, but yeah, kind yeah, of. Yeah, kind of. So you're answering your own bit. questions, right? I don't have time for matching anymore, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> See, she's saying she ain't got time to match. Come no, on. No, no, no. So you she got, got time, time for match. that. Yes, she Never does. stop being a lady. Never stop being the pretty that you've always been. You know, I got it's more time consuming, but that comes with the gig. It's like a man. Your man can't stop doing for you what he did for you in the beginning. You shouldn't accept that. You don't, you don't have to like that. You know, women kill me when they make this statement here. A man has to accept me just the way I am. No, he don't. Who told you that? <laughs> That's not a true statement, but you don't have to accept that from a man either. If a man is not meeting your standards, you have yeah. every right to put a stop to that immediately. Where's Monica? Monica has a question. Stand on up, Monica. What's your question for Steve? Hello. I'm a single mother. I had two boys. One is five and the other is 12. And I just uh, want to know when is, I'm currently dating. I just want to know when is the right time to introduce my boyfriend to my boys. Well, see, right I, I got a chapter in the book called By the Time He Meets the Kids, It's Already Too Late. See, <laughs> a lot. So no, see, let's check this out. See, a lot of single women don't want to bring a parade of men through the house so their kids don't think there's nothing up when there's nothing up, and it's not safe to bring men parading through your house. Got it understood. But you got to get these kids introduced to this man, ASAP, especially if you think he has the potential to be your man or father. So here's what I recommend. Get them introduced right away. Just go to a public place. Look, go to a uh, McDonald's that's got the playground in it, you know? <laughs> go, go meet him for lunch and have McDonald's, and let him meet the kids. Let the kids meet him. Go to a park. Sit down. It's inexpensive. He is gets it, to interact with the kids. Is it because the kids can kind of weed out a loser? The kids can weed him out a lot faster than you because, see, here's your problem. If your kids don't like the man, you have a problem. But here's your bigger problem. If your man is feeling you, you done messed around and slept with him, then all of a sudden you introduce him to your kids and he don't like your kids, you have a major problem on your hands and you could have avoided that. We'll be right back. <laughs> given some tough love advice to women about sex and relationships in a book that has become an instant number one bestseller. The book is huge. It's called Act Like a Lady, Think Like a Man. Now, I know our audience has some more questions. What you got for him, Jessica? You ready for some, some, some real truth from Mr. Steve Harvey? Well, it's a bit difficult. So I'm 22 years old, and I came out of a long-term relationship a couple months ago, and now I'm back on the dating scene, and I'm really trying to put myself out there and get involved in a relationship. But inevitably, nothing is working out, and I just keep getting dumped. I'm curious from you if you have any pointers on how I can let men know that I'm kind of relationship material. I mean, you say that you keep getting dumped? <laughs> No, I mean, I mean, you know, I mean, that's a real problem that women have, but then you got to look at what you're putting out there, too. You know what I'm saying? You got to be more selective in your, in, your, in your process of picking men so you don't become so easily dumped. You know, so many women have no standards, no requirements. You just go into a relationship, I'm going to date a guy and see what happens. Once we pick that up in you, that you want to see what's going to happen, then guess what? Just whatever we want to happen is what's going to happen. That's it. You have no more say-so. So then you wind up getting on the short end of the stick. Women have stopped having 
having standards and requirements when they first meet a guy because you're so afraid you're going to run a guy off. You're not going to run no guy off that really wants you. I got news for you. You can't run us off if we want you. Please know you can't do that. Hi, Steve. My name is Rochelle. I've been dating this guy for a couple of months. He's met my son. Everything is going well. Chemistry is great. So my question to you is, how soon or how long should I wait till we get intimate? Well, oh, you guys haven't done it yet? No. <laughs> That is. And it's going great. <laughs> and, and that's absolutely, and see, let me tell you something. That's something else. I tell women, I have in the book, I have a section called The 90 Day Rule. So I used to work at Ford Motor Company. And we had, at Ford Motor Company, they hired me and they had a probation period. Well, I had to be on the job for 90 days before they gave me full pay and before they gave me a benefit package. Mm -hmm. Before I could get dental, medical, get my eyes checked, <laughs> all of that. That was their benefit package. You had to be on the job 90 days. Why 90 days? Well, Ford figured this. We get to see how he is, how he performs on the job, if he works well with others, if he comes on time, if he does what he says he's going to do, then we give him benefits. Why is it that women who possess the greatest benefit of them all. Your loving, your time, your sexiness, your company, your body, all the greatest benefit to man. There ain't a man living that ain't got to have those things. But you passing out benefits before 90 days. You don't even know this dude. You don't even know this dude. So that's great. So, so where are you in your probationary period? How many Excuse months? Me? How many months have you? It's been 90 days. <laughs> Well, I mean, you know what, it's, 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 it's like this, you know, if this guy is really performing up to your standards and you've got the good sense to at least wait and see, because you got a kid here too now. Right. You can't just jump out here crazy. Right. If he's performing up to your standards, look, everybody says you should abstain and wait till you marriage and all that. That's, that's cool if you could do that. I don't know nobody <laughs> that can wait till they marry. I, I don't know them. <laughs> So I think it's time if you if you're ready for it. Are you ready? Do you want him? Do you sexually want him? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, the camera. <laughs> well, it's time, oh, yeah. girl. I saw the look on her face. Oh yeah. yeah. She uh, biting her nails now. <laughs> if I'd have said six months, she'd have just ran out this building. <laughs> you talk about something in your book called uh, the cookie. What is the cookie? I mean, well, the cookie. I don't. You know, I keep my book clean. It's for everybody. So the cookie is sex. And I mean, the reason I call it the cookie is that cause, doesn't sound clean to me. <laughs> well, well, everybody I know like cookies. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know. Nobody don't like cookies. What type My of cookies cookie, do you like? I like chocolate chip, but if you ain't got none, I'll eat a vanilla cream. <laughs> you also have five questions that every woman should ask before moving into a relationship, before moving it forward. What are the five questions that they hey, should ask? Hey, look, you know, I tell women on the first date, the first time you meet a man, let's get busy with these questions. You're the best interrogators in the world, but you, you are so afraid that if you sound too forward that you'll run a guy off. Mm -hmm. You got to know, wait, look, you should ask a guy immediately, first night, what are your short-term goals? You got to know what the guy's plan is. Immediately following that, ask him what his long-term goals is. See, those are two different things. See, what you're going to be doing over the next year mm -hmm. is going to be very different from what you're doing in five years. A guy can't answer that question. You are now talking to a man who does not have a plan. Mm -hmm. Why would you attach yourself to somebody who don't have a plan? Yeah. And a plan is sexy, actually. If a man has a plan, Absolutely. it's sexy to me. And guess what? You have every right to know if you want to buy into that future with that guy or not. Mm -hmm. You're not being too forward. You're not being nosy. The, then so, the third question, you need to get into some personal stuff. What's his relationship with his, with his mom? How, how does he feel about children? Does he have a relationship with God? You sit up here talking to a dude and he tells you he's an atheist, you need to pack it up and go home. <laughs> you know, you're talking to a person who don't believe in God, you finna, you finna, where, what's his moral barometer? Where is it at? It's nowhere. You got to get into this stuff. After you find out all of this, you get a nice little feel for the guy, you go out. You want to ask God two questions after you've been dating for a minute. First question, what do you think of me? Let a guy tell you what he thinks of you. These are very, see, we love talking. The more we talk, we share information by ourselves. You ask a guy, what does he think of me? And he may tell you, I think you're great. I think you're the motherly type. I think you make a great wife. He's telling you everything you want to hear. Because we already know that's what you want to hear. <laughs> but right after that, ask him how he feels about you. Ooh. See, how we feel about you, way different from what we think about you. So if he's like, I think you're cool, you're all right. You think you're cool, all right. That's, that's what you feel about me? Yeah. You think you, could, you have nothing right here. You have nothing. And so now, guess what? All of this happens when? In the 90-day probation period. And then so you, you give it to, to him after that. If he's <laughs>
You can pass it out like a party fly. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> Stirring up romantic controversy with his number one bestseller that's flying off the shelves. It's called Act Like a Lady, Think Like a Man. Now, um, your book talks about um, grown men. Um, what, what, I'm sorry, that when we t uh, say the words to men, we need to talk. They like, they run for cover. Like, they just yeah. freak out. So I, I try to tell ladies, this whole book is how men think. And it's designed to empower women with the information that you've never had about us before. Because you keep talking to each other and you keep swapping stupid information. <laughs> You really do. You, you keep trading information. You don't really know. And you just keep swapping stupid information here. If you sit your man down and go, we need to talk, that's crazy for us. We immediately put up defensive barriers yeah. because we want to talk because we don't know where this is going to go. When you want to talk to your man, know that your man is talking to you for one reason, to provide a fix. We want to fix your problem. We don't want to vent with you. We don't, we, we don't know how to do that. We want to fix the problem so we can quit talking about it. <laughs> so when you say we need to talk, and you're not, we already know you're not going to allow us to fix this. So now we don't want to talk. If you've got a, a subject you want to breach with your man, just say, hey, look, sit down for a second, and then just start the conversation. Not it we need to talk, It yeah. don't give him time to put the wall up. Got Once it. we get the wall up, we're not really listening real good. And then you talk about the three Ps that men use to express love. And that just sounds freaky. Well, so what is the what is no, what are the three see, P's? Okay, Ty, this is I, I have a gutter mind sometimes, and it just went there. One of the P's. Come on, to express love, a man. I, I would have enjoyed that back in my day, but I'm gonna just keep. <laughs> L listen to me. What are the P's? A woman's love is all encompassing. You all cover every aspect when it comes to love. You 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 you're nurturing, you're sharing, you're caring, you're great communicators. You know that's how you express your love. You get disappointed in, in your man when he doesn't give you your love back the same way you gave it to him. Well, that's not in our DNA. That's not how we're built. You can be frustrated with us if you want to. This is how we are. We show our love three ways, and I call them the three Ps. We profess, we provide, and we protect. That's okay. how we exhibit our love. We profess. We will tell anybody, if we love you, that we love you. And we will have a title for you within six months. If you're dating a man in six months and he's still introducing you as his friend, <laughs> you have nothing. We've made up our mind in six months who you are because we attach that to our love, a title. Because when our friends come around, we got to lay claim. Hey, man, this is my woman here. Hey, this is my fiance. This is my baby's got mama. It. This is my wife. Because that's how we lay claim to territory. Secondly, we provide. Whatever our means is, wherever our money level at, we will do the best we can for you with that money. If you love her. If we love you. And then protect. Can nobody say nothing crazy to you or them kids? Because guess what? And you got to be careful when a man loves you. You can't come home and go, well, I had a problem at the office. He was talking about me. <laughs> you might not have a job if you tell this fool. <laughs> and now, any man that says he loves you without those three things in a combination does not love you. We'll be right back. <laughs> Selling book charts and enlightening single ladies everywhere with Act Like a Lady, Think Like a Man, his new book. Now, Whitney Casey has her own rules for single women in search of Mr. Right and her new book called The Man Plan. So, are you single yourself? Yes, I you am. You are single. I'm out there. You're I'm out, out there. there with all of it. 54% of women are single. Yeah. I'm out there with them and I interviewed 250 men. So basically what Steve is saying, he's no relationship expert, but he's a man. He yeah. knows what men think. Yeah. So what's up with the man plan? As a woman, I want to know what men think, especially a single woman out there dating. So I said, 250 men, I was a former CNN journalist, so I took them down like I would take down those criminals. I would go out there and I'd say, okay, what is it? Why are you not dating us? Why are 54% of us single still? What is it that you don't want about a woman? What is it that you don't want them to smell like, taste like, <laughs> touch, everything? I mean, from, you know, because men, they're tactile. As Steve said, they see shiny things, they take shiny things. And I was on Steve's show, he said, you've never seen a man cross a room for a woman's brain. I hate to say that, I know it's controversial, but that's what I did. What I went through, and I wanted to know, well, what is it? What is it that we need to smell like? If we need to be shiny, what's too shiny? What do you think, what, you know, because men, they don't, they don't exactly say to you, well, I love those shoes, but they know when they don't like a, sh a pair of shoes. Well, we've got some audience questions for Whitney and Steve. So, who's first? Got Randy. Hey, how are you doing? Uh, my question is, I'm looking to attract a man. I'm 25 and single. And what kind of perfume do men prefer? Is there a certain scent that I should try? 
Yeah, what, what are the scents? Definitely. Um, well, I did some of the research from the University of Chicago, and they have a smell and taste research institute, plus then 250 men wanted to d be a part of this. Vanilla. Vanilla. You would think, you know, all this, I know. Smell like a cookie. <laughs> The, the Smell and Taste Research Institute also says that grapefruit will make you look 10 years younger. That is my scent, I swear. Right, Joe Malone I grapefruit. Wear grapefruit. grapefruit. I wear Joe Malone grapefruit. I wear all yes. kind of grapefruit. Yes. Everywhere. Yes. See? That, then, and, well, <laughs> well, not everywhere. And but. you'll probably get carded everywhere you go. <laughs> Smell like grapefruit. <laughs> <laughs> Cookies and grapefruit. Cookies and grapefruit. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, who's next? Stephanie? Hi, how are you? Great. Um, so my question is, sometimes me and my girlfriends will leave the apartment um, not done up without makeup or wearing sweatpants, um, and we get a little anxious in fear of possibly running into an ex-boyfriend or a past hookup. When that happens, is that something that they notice, or is that just in our heads, and are we paranoid? Well, Steve said it. You gotta, they, they like shiny things. If you're running around in sweatpants and a, you know, not, looking a little unkempt and disheveled, that's not, what a, that's not what a man wants. He wants to see his lady looking like a lady. So you notice when we're looking schleppy if you're the ex. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, and absolutely. do you enjoy it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah she done fell off. Okay. Yeah, but you, you, yeah you she know, lost Big Daddy, she fell off. <laughs> they yeah. love that, but you know what you have to be careful about not to get too shiny? Because, I, as I say, you don't want anything falling off in your date. If it can fall off like fake nails, fake eyelashes, fake hair, if it's falling off in your food, it's not a good well, thing. Well, then, child, I can't date then because everything will be falling off. What's your question? Hi, my name is Tracy. I just wanted to ask, um, me and my girlfriends, when we go out, we always look shiny. We try to look as shiny as possible. We always look glamorous. I wanted to know, do men really pay attention to that at nightlife? I think it's all about shine and nightlife. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, you know, it's, it's the thing. But then it's a thin line, too, with men. Yeah. You know, you don't notice, but it's a thin line. When you're shiny, you're short and really ex explosive. You know, you're exposing a lot. It's too shiny, too short. Then we, then we categorize you. And you're not, you're not anybody that we're going to be planning with. You're just somebody we're going to be playing with. So if yeah. you dress like you can be played with, that's how we're going to treat you. I always say choose what you want to, like, look skanky. You mm -hmm. know, do you want to, like, be skanky from, like, on the bottom part and wear a little short, you know, skirt? Then wear, like, a long sleeve thing like I have on now. Or do you want a whole bunch of cleavage popping out, like, pow, pow, da, da, da. Yeah. Or then cover it up with some slacks, you know, so that it's, like, sexy, not skank. But the number yeah. one body part that all men like is this region right here, the decolletage. Really? It's not necessarily the cleavage or the legs. Or this looks beautiful on every woman. Every woman can look beautiful right here. So yeah. men, they love this. Highlight this. Exfoliate it. <laughs> Mine is all yes. covered up. <laughs> yeah, Tyra. <laughs> there you go. Now look at that. How yeah. about that cookie? That's, that's <laughs> how, but it leads to something. <laughs> Next. Oh, wow. That, that did change your blouse quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Steve. Hi, ladies. Uh, I know you don't have this problem, but what are the biggest turnoffs for men? Turnoffs. Well, it, you know, the, the, the clothing, certainly, the scent, certainly. Uh, another thing that I say, nude bras, okay? You have really? to say no to the nude. So if it's your skin color, you can't? Well, no, bad? because think about this. Okay, the t-shirt bra, 67% of women have four bras, and they're all nude. And nude bras, I don't, you know, I don't know if you know the terminology, but it's like that bra that goes under the, your, every wife wears it, and they take off their, it's sort of like this ratty old bra. You can get a nude bra under white they, that has lace or has a little intrigue or has Got a little it. something that teases them, that makes them think that, hey, you still are trying. You know, this yeah. is still sexy, but it still is very practical to go under a white t-shirt. Okay, so you need it to be a little lace on the nude bra. And no flats. And no... Feet. No, no flat oh, shoes. Oh, no flat shoes. Absolutely Feet. not. Kitten heels. Feet and hands with a man. Oh, God. A complete turn on. <laughs> My hands right now haven't had a manicure in like a month. But do you have to have long fingernails? Because what I found is that men do not like fake nails. Well, they don't. Men don't know. They don't know that they fake. We, we're that stupid. We, we don't know that. We, we don't care. Long or short, as long as they look nice and your feet. What cannot happen is, mm -hmm. your foot cannot look like my foot. <laughs> Wait, let's see. Oh, well, not a chance. We'll be right, right back. Not a chance. <laughs> like a lady but think like a man to get a man but the writers of how to love like a hot chick have another point of view this is Jody Lipper and Serena Vincent okay so what's the status of you guys' love lives right now I just got married this past summer oh, okay. and I just <laughs> and 
I just got married in December, actually. Okay. But, but, you know, when we met and when we started writing our books together, um, we were both single and we were both making all the same mistakes that all the women in the audience and out there are making, and we were very confused. So you guys have a different message. What's your message that's different than Steve's? Well, our and message, Lenny's? first and foremost, is that every woman is a hot chick. We're sort of redefining that term. It's a, it's a confident woman. And, you know, men do walk across the room for confidence. Yes. And a woman who doesn't apologize for what size she is, for what she looks like, um, for what her... Um, you know, relationship status is. We want all women to be confident in that. All and right. it's all fine and good for to know what men are thinking, which is great and helpful, but we want women to know what they want and figure out what they want in a man so that they can go out and get it. All right, more questions. Who's next? Hi, this question's for Serena and Jody. I was just wondering, same question that every lady in the audience probably has, if you meet a guy on the first night and he's really great, is it okay to hook up with him on that first night? Well, that's a great question. You know, we think it really depends on what you're looking for. If you're looking for a serious relationship or a husband, you probably shouldn't hook up with him on the first night. But, you know, our book isn't just about finding a man. It's about enjoying your single experiences, enjoying your heyday, we call it. So if you're young, you are young. You know, you're out there, you're dating, you're having a good time. If you're not looking for something serious, <laughs> enjoy it. You know, women like cookies, too. You know, that's what I wanted to say. This week. <laughs> enjoy your cookies. About that. I think hooking up with a guy on the first night is absolutely stupid. <laughs> it's ridiculous. All right. Well, let me say one more thing. It's all, you don't actually have to follow through with it, but opening up your mind to the possibility. There's a lot of women that are, have fears of intimacy or that are scared of sex. We talk about that, too. Like, they're sending out, like, an I'm scared of sex vibe. If you're one of those women, just saying, you know what, maybe if all else fails, maybe I'll sleep with them. Just walking out that door with that confidence, you don't even have to actually act on it. it you're going to start attracting different men and sending out that sort of hot chick vibe that um, is really going to change your love life. So have you ever slept with a guy on the first date? Uh, no, not me personally. Okay, because I'm looking at you going, you just look so sweet. But then those are the ones that just flip it and turn upside down. <laughs> Don't wear new bras. <laughs> okay, up next. Who's next? Hi, this question is mainly for Steve. Um, why don't men like to cuddle after having sex? <laughs> so after you eat cookies, how come you don't want to cuddle with it? I mean, in <laughs> Basically, because we hot. I mean, you know, a guy is, I, I'm gonna just be honest with you, this is how men feel about it. I talk, this whole book is written of how men think, and I, all my friends are men, so I, this is pretty much on point. We're exhausted, we're hot, we've labored beyond belief. <laughs> we've hit a point at the end of it, the culmination of it is pretty electrifying for us. You got the hairs up on the back of your neck, a lot of stuff that's been sent in the shock right quick. <laughs> And right after that, we pretty much got to shut it down. I mean, look, we still love you, but could you just stay over there for a minute so I can gather myself? That's, and, that's really it. And one of my chapters is your dream bedroom, his nightmare. It talks about thread counts and what your sheet should be like so that he wants to stay in bed and cuddle with you and so that you don't have too many pillows on the bed that are making him too hot. So stick under 400 thread count, and you're going to be great. You'll keep him in bed snuggling with you. All right. Cheap sheets. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What's your question? Hi, my name's Allison. I'm 24. I consider myself to be actively dating, but I haven't had much luck recently. So my friends are setting me up on my first blind date tomorrow night. Does anyone have any advice for me about going on blind dates? I've done it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, absolutely. You know, um, first of all, before you go out on this date, we want you to take a step back and figure out exactly what you want in a man, like what you want in a relationship, what, what kind of love you want to have in your life. We actually have a program in our book called Build a Boyfriend, and this is sort of a step-by-step <laughs> Um, process where you fi figure out exactly what you want, what kind of relationship is going to make you happy. So then when you go out on this blind date, you're going to know within two seconds if this guy is right for you. What do you think about blind dates, Steve? Well, I mean, you know, they can work out cool sometimes, you know? I mean, they can be a disaster. You said you went on a blind date. Yeah, I went on a blind date. I dated the guy for a year. I mean, but that, that's got to be a, like an amazing jackpot. A dude is sitting at the <laughs> table and Ty Banks is just... <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> what did you wear on that blind date? You know what? I don't remember, but I, but I does, had I never kissed a guy on the first date ever, and I kissed him on the first date. This is oh. like 10 years ago. I kissed him on the first date, and I had never done that before. And you had good breath, I bet. Oh, yes, honey. Minty. Fresh. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But I, I would recommend... Where did she go? Oh, stand up again. Stand up. I would, I would recommend that you choose a place that's quick. You know, like kind of a fast kind of meal. You know, not McDonald's, but not like Cheesecake Factory either. You know, kind of like, what's it like a fast kind of restaurant? Starbucks is too fast, 
but kind of like Friday's appetizers. And because if you don't like them, it's like, okay, my nachos are done. Bye. <laughs> be, you on, know? be on time. Be yes, on time. Yes, you have to be on time. Because if you're not on time, like shiny things, like Steve said, there's another girl in there that's going to be on time, and she may be waiting for her late guy date, and they may meet up. There are two, two couples in my book that actually meet up because one of the women is late for the first date. So be on time for your oh, blind date and go to a quick, quick spot. I we'll be right back. <laughs> How did you hook your wife? Because she was a single well, lady at one point. Yeah, I, I didn't really hook her. She hooked me. She um, hooked you. Yeah, she really did. I mean, you know, she is a, she's a great person, but I tell you what, I'm, I'm telling you a story that I put in a book that's really true, and these ladies have it on the head. She knew what she wanted, and she had her standards and requirements set up. She was visiting in, in New York one time. She's supposed to stay for four days. Well, the first night, uh, I get up to go to the bathroom about 3 o'clock in the morning, and she's in the hallway with her bag and her coat, and it's on, and she's... At 3 o'clock in the morning, I said, where, where are you going? She said, I'm leaving. I said, you're leaving why? She said, look, she said, Steve, I'm okay with you doing you. Look, you've, you've gotten a divorce. You, you want to you wanna, you wanna, you wanna play around. You want to sow your wild love. I still love you. I think that's great. I have no right to stop you from wanting what you want. But what I want for myself and for my children, I'm looking for someone who can step in and be the father that they need and be the husband that I need. Now, the fact that you don't want that right now, it doesn't make you a bad person. You're a great person. Go do you. But what I got to do is I'm, I'm leaving. Now, I'll be in Memphis. When you come to that realization that that's what you want, call me. When and if I'm available, the... I came to that conclusion that night. <laughs> yeah. I took my flip phone, snapped it in half. That killed all the babes. That, that <laughs> threw away all the women's numbers. Yeah. Click. Because the best thing I had ever met was about to walk out the door. But she had her standards and her requirements lined up for what, like they say, she had what she wanted. Packed. And so she was gone. And yes. I went, whoa, 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 whoa. I cannot let her get away from me. Yes. So six months later, I took her to Mexico, proposed. Six months after that, we were married. Because she said, that's what I have to have. Wow. I love it. OK. So is the, is the advice, like, if the man is tripping, is the advice and the story from this is pack your bags and put on your coat and walk slowly to the door? Well, kind of like that, you know, um, you know, you don't want to say ultimatum with a guy because you throw him out of it. But if your standards and requirements are set, if your standards and requirements are high, the guy that wants you mm -hmm. is going to climb the bar. Yeah, they chase. They not always tell women that all the time. They will chase you That's down. That's what we want to do. Yes. Chase we the ones that to. run away. <laughs> yes. See, look, if your standards are high, eight-foot wall, if we really want you, we'll climb over that wall. What women do is they keep their standards down here because they think they're going to run a guy off. Well, guess what? Now you got a lot of guys stepping in your yard playing. Yeah, it's a little curb. That's easy to hop. That's easy. They <laughs> yeah. just over there and they in your yard. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> a chance to win a copy of Steve's book or share your own thoughts on men, go to tyrashow.com. And while you're there, get more dating tips from Whitney Casey. Now, I want to tell you guys about a very special project. It's called the UNICEF TAP Project. The week of March 22nd through the 28th is World Water Week. And if you go to participating restaurants and donate a dollar for a glass of tap water that you normally get for free, you'll be helping a child have clean and safe drinking water for 40 days. Do you hear that? That one dollar will have a child have clean drinking water for 40 days. So go to tyrashow.com for more information on that. And we'll see you later. Thank you guys so much. Thank for you.